Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. And today we have a very clickbaity-ish title to delve into, you know, the sort of thing you'll see plastered all over all kinds of videos across the internet, along with bounty prediction videos, because that stuff just seems to be the bread and butter of One Piece videos on YouTube. And to be fair, I enjoy bread. I enjoy bread a lot, sometimes with butter. And this does claim to be your source for everything One Piece. So today we are going to take a legitimate look at the prospect of ranking the admirals. Before we hop into things though, this is very exciting because this video is actually sponsored by Cartoonificate, me, who specialize in creating custom portraits of all of you wonderful people in various styles, one of which is the very cool One Piece bounty poster format. You just give them a photo of yourself with some instructions and bam, you will be immortalized forever in bounty form. I had one done of me, I love it, and I want it on my wall immediately. And they will effectively draw whatever you want. I mean, they even included a South Boat in mine, as well as a very cool detail by having me holding Enma, so they're very good at what they do. And these portraits can be ordered either exclusively in digital format, or they can also be printed and shipped directly to you. So if you're interested in your own custom bounty poster or a slew of other caricature options, then the link to Cartoonificate Me is in the description below. Now back to the video at hand, I've chosen this topic because fun fact about me, anytime anyone ever says something like Yonko level or Yonko commander level, a piece of me dies inside because I firmly believe that there is no such thing as either of these. They are far too general of a term to use and can rather dangerously imply that someone like a post time skip Blackbeard is on par with Whitebeard because you know they're both a Yonko level. And this gets even worse with the commanders because the disparity between those characters is even greater. However, the one tier that I will admit that this kind of simple thought does apply to is with the admirals. So whenever someone says admiral level, I find it very difficult to argue with that because from what we've seen in the series, Oda has quite deliberately structured things so that it seems like the individuals holding the rank of admiral are all kind of on par with each other. So that's why this sort of discussion interests me to see if we can distinguish between these absurdly powerful peeps with the little information that we have. So let us now commence with wanking the admirals. What? No. So I want to make it clear that that's not what we'll be doing here today, but let's see if I can say it properly this time. Let us now commence with ranking the admirals. So the way we're going to do this is by going through a very simple point-based system, which will at least provide the illusion of empirical evidence. So here is our wonderful table of admirals consisting of Kuzan, Sakazuki, Kizaru, Fujitora, and Ryukugyu. And the reason why we need to deal with things in this manner is because there is not necessarily a clear tier system whereby say, for example, Fujitora beats Kuzan, who beats Kizaru, and therefore Fujitora would also be Kizaru. Unfortunately, due to the nature of Haki, Devil Fruits, and individual quirks, it's not so simple. And you could have a situation where say, Fujitora beats Kuzan, Kuzan beats Kizaru, and Kizaru beats Fujitora, leaving us in a very awkward position. So we need to take a much broader measure of each Admiral's potential, which I have chosen to do with the following table, which will match them up against each other individually, and award points to the victors. Ideally, coming out with a clear general ranking system. But let's begin this discussion by addressing the unfortunate situation that is Ryukugyu, because at the time of this recording, the lame fact is that we still have not seen anything beyond a silhouette of this man, let alone anything in connection to his abilities. I mean, I'm sure he is ridiculously powerful, just like everyone else here, but there is no possible way to stack him up against anybody. He could fall absolutely anywhere on this ranking, and as a result, all of his matchups are immediately going to be given the good old not applicable, and no points awarded to anybody, especially especially Ryukugyu. So spoiler alert, unless one of the admirals has a particularly abysmal time here, he is going to end up in fifth and final place. And some people out there may try to argue that Ryukugyu is obviously stronger than, uh, no, insert admiral of choice. But any statement like that is pure speculation and headcanon at this point in the story. And as an anime YouTuber on the internet, which is obviously one of the most important jobs in the world, my standards demand that we immediately exclude Ryukugyu on the basis of lacking any basis for discussion. Cool, so with that out of the way, let's move on to the largest piece of empirical evidence we do have, which is that two admirals have already fought before, and we do have a conclusive outcome, those being Kuzan and Sakazuki, who battled for the position of fleet admiral on the island of Punk Hazard following Sengoku's retirement. The two of them were locked in brutal combat for 10 days straight in an event that would go on to completely reshape the climate of Punk Hazard. But eventually, Sakazuki did emerge victorious, so that will be one point for him and no points for Kuzan. And you know, out of all of the possible matchups, this is the one that I'm really glad we do have a conclusive answer on though, because due to the clashing of Devil Fruit powers, I don't think I could have personally properly assessed which way this would have gone. In theory, their Devil Fruits are each other's exact counter, and in combination with their similar physical prowess and mastery of Haki, well, all of those factors are likely why this fight lasted a whopping 10 days. And it really does feel like it could have gone either way, but Sakazuki 100% has the edge in this matchup. So good on him. But let's continue aboard the absolute justice train and see what happens when we think about the potential of Sakazuki versus Kizaru. And I want to preface 
this, as well as any discussion involving Kizaru, by pointing out that his Devil Fruit, the Pika Pika no Mi, does not allow him to move at the speed of light as we know it in the real world. If it did, then every collision he has with matter would result in something of an atomic bomb's worth of damage due to the unfathomable speed of impact. So Kizaru subscribes to a very one piece light speed consistency, which gives all of his opponents a significantly greater chance against him. He also has another huge problem in that light can only move in a single direction. And once that direction is chosen, it cannot be changed unless it's by an outside force, such as a reflection or a refraction. So it's not like Kizaru can even move freely at will in whatever the One Piece world equivalent of light speed is. He has an incredible restriction placed on him, which to be fair, he does use pretty phenomenally. Kizaru's greatest strength in this clash though, is that his Haki has been demonstrated to be roughly the same level of Sakazuki's. Both of them can use advanced armament Haki, so neither of them will have any issues damaging the other and effectively bypassing their fruit powers. In which case, it may come down to pure physicality, and I mean, yes, Kizaru can move faster, but in a very restricted manner. So outspeeding Sakazuki isn't necessarily going to give Kizaru the win. Where I think Kizaru does lose this though, is in his lack of sheer determination. Sakazuki's absolute justice is not just a motto for show. No, he profoundly believes in it and will do whatever it takes to secure this ideology, including taking on the strongest man in the world, getting absolutely wrecked and living to tell the tale. Kizaru just doesn't have that pure drive. And that is why I wholeheartedly believe that despite some nice movementy tricks, Sakazuki would come out on top once again in this conflict. So that's another win for Sakazuki and an initial loss for Kizaru. But hey, let's see if Kizaru has some better luck against Kuzan. And oh, sadly, I do think I have some bad news for him as well. So the main problem when he is up against Kuzan is obviously ice. Lots and lots of delicious ice. And ice just happens to be one of those things that refracts light. Meaning that if Kuzan were to use his absurd Logia to cover the battlefield in a maze of ice, then Kizaru would have a very difficult time moving around because the ice will very consistently change his direction against his will. So in my opinion, the best chance Kizaru has has here is to strike before Kuzan has the opportunity to invoke his power on this scale, which we do know that he can do with great ease. And yes, Kizaru can stop and fire off shots of light or laser beams to break the ice, but Kuzan just has to make more and more. And every time that Kizaru does that, he would need to stop putting him in a vulnerable position for Kuzan to strike. I just really don't think that their elements are a good matchup for Kizaru, given that ice directly manipulates light. In fact, if Kuzan was incredibly skilled with the Hia Hia no Mi, which he may very well be, then he might even be able to control Kizaru's movements by purposely crafting ice with very specific angles to lure his fellow Admiral into a trap. So look, it's nowhere near 100% guaranteed, but this match is definitely Kuzan's to lose. So we're going to go with that for now. And oh boy, not looking too good for Kizaru at the moment. And I'm afraid it's probably not about to get much better. To finish this poor, poor man off, let's look at Kizaru versus Fujitora. And here is another huge problem for the yellow monkey because gravity also manipulates light. Now this is admittedly a bit of a weird one because light doesn't have mass, but it is still subject to gravity. Now, to be clear, gravity does not control the speed that the light can move at. However, it does very much influence the light's direction of travel. And so in theory, Fujitora could completely wreck Kizaru with even more control over his fellow Admiral's movement than Kuzan would have had. Fujitora can't stop Kizaru moving quickly. However, he can simply stand there and make it so that Kizaru will never have a path to him. And that includes any projectile light shots as well, which would all be subject to the same power. Laser beams, maybe not so much, but if that's all Fujitora needs to deal with, then he's in a pretty good spot. So in order to win, Kizaru would need to completely abandon his light abilities and face off against Fujitora with physicality and Haki alone. And that is the worst case scenario for Kizaru, who is a classic example of a figure who is overly reliant on his Devil Fruit abilities. So with that in mind, Kizaru, my man, that is another loss for you and an opening victory for one Mr. Fujitora. And the last two remaining conflicts will involve the Blind Swordsman as well. So let's first of all look at Fujitora versus Kuzan. Now this is actually a bit of a tricky one. And I will start off by saying that Fujitora has a very nice counter to Kuzan's icy business, being that he can quite literally summon meteors with his gravitational pull that will eviscerate large portions of Kuzan's icy realm. Plus Kuzan doesn't actually have a great answer to the meteor attacks because his ice is naturally non-destructive. So at best he could maybe very, maybe freeze the meteor, but the heat from entry would make that very difficult. Difficult. Gravity in general also puts Kuzan very much on the defensive because his ice would be subject to its laws as well, making it just as difficult to hit Fujitora with any form of projectile as it would have been for Kizaru. And even if Fujitora was to be frozen in an attack from Kuzan, well, let's think back. If somebody like Doflamingo can escape from his ice, then so can Fujitora. Plus something we haven't spoken about yet is that of all of the Admirals thus far, Fujitora possesses the most advanced demonstrated observation Haki. Well, I should also point out that at the moment, Kuzan has the more demonstrated edge in armament Haki as Fujitora Fujitora has not yet invoked an advanced use of it in the series. That does make this matchup a bit difficult because Fujitora does seem to have a level of control that Kuzan cannot hope to achieve. Fujitora can summon meteors, he can 
can also cast a gravitational force over the battlefield, and he has the edge of information in regards to Observation Haki. So despite a demonstrated superiority in Armament Haki, at the moment I am finding it very, very difficult to seeing a path to victory for Kuzan. And so I am left with no choice but to give Fujitora his second victory in a row. And that is going to leave us with one final matchup to decide the ultimate supreme but slightly arbitrary better than any other video ranking of the Admirals, which is Sakazuki versus Fujitora. And right off the bat, Meteors are no longer an advantage for Fujitora because Sakazuki can summon his own through the mighty power of magma. And they are arguably much more dangerous than what Fujitora can call down. Smaller yes, but far more potent. And Sakazuki in general is not pushed on the defensive in the same way that Kuzan would be because Sakazuki's Devil Fruit is a natural destructive power. And in fact, it has also been called the Devil Fruit with the highest defensive capabilities. And yes, gravity will also affect magma, so Fujitori does have some degree of control here, but at the same time, significantly less magma is required to deal a lethal blow to Fujitora than say ice or light. And what I don't see is how Fujitora ultimately deals the finishing blow to Sakazuki. His gravity has fantastic control and will significantly slow him down, but in the end, Fujitora doesn't have any particular win condition, whereas Sakazuki does. Get close enough, and destroy Fujitora with magma. It might take a while, maybe even 10 days, but the win condition is there. And I will say that I think this would be a very, very hard fought battle because both of them have profound beliefs in their own ideology. But in the end, I just don't see a situation in which Sakazuki does not once again come out on top. He just has everything, the most potent power, a mastery of Haki, and the sheer drive to succeed. And until any further evidence is attained, that is how we're going to play it. And that is our final matchup. So we have our official Grand Line Review Admiral Rankings. Whoa! And in fifth place, it is Ryukugyu, because we know nothing about him yet, and that has led to his immediate disqualification. Once he does show up to play, then this becomes a very different discussion, but right now, you're on the bottom, buddy. In fourth place, we have the very unfortunate Kizaru, who despite his incredible power, and I'm sure that a lot of people would disagree with me on this, but he has a very poor matchup against all of his contemporaries, not even managing to secure a single victory in this video. To the bronze medal now, and it is Guzan. Good old Guzan. His Devil Fruit is powerful as hell. He is powerful. He is powerful as hell, and probably has the best chance against someone like Sakazuki just due to the Devil Fruit matchups. But in the end, even he is outclassed by second place Fujitora. And the power to control gravity, which is one of the craziest things that One Piece has ever introduced, and could very possibly take the first place position. But in this case, at the top of the Admiral rankings, we have Sakazuki. Quite consistently known as one of the most terrifying figures in the series, and that is for very good reason, as we've explored in depth here. So congratulations, and all hail your benevolent overlord of absolute justice. And that pretty much does it for this channel's attempt at covering a clickbaity style topic like ranking the admirals. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produces in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if you'd like to see more videos like this but applied to other anime manga series, then please do feel free to check out my second channel, New World Review, for all of your wider needs. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your own Admiral Rankings. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.